Hi, it's Richard here again, and welcome to my channel. Today, our discussion will be on logarithms. Today, before the video will end, I will introduce you to what logarithm means, the relationship between logarithm and indices. Then we'll prove some laws governing logarithms and some properties governing logarithms. This will be a very interesting engagement, so please watch the video till the end. So logarithms are written like this. So when we write it like this, it means log b base a. The base is a and b is the log. So we say log b base a. So if I have this, we say log 5 base 2. This, it means log 6 base 3. I hope you, you know how to call it now. The next thing we talk about is to look at the relationship between logarithms and indices. So the next thing we'll look at is the relationship between indices and logarithms. Please, I'll indulge you to check out my videos on indices on YouTube. Please go to YouTube and search for the TJ Kepsi Richard and look at them. Now, we said that in indices, when we write this, 3 exponent 4 equal to 81. 3 is the base and 4 is the exponent. So 3 exponent 4 is equal to 81. We can write this in logarithm form. This can be log 81 base 3 and it's equal to 4. So 3 exponent 4 equal to 81 is the same as log 81 base 3 and it's equal to 4. We'll look at the reason why it's 4. Now this one can be written as log 32 base 2 and it's equal to 5. Then this will be log 1 over 16 base 2 and it will be equal to negative 4 to be equal to the exponent here. Then this will be log 1 over 36 base 6 and it will be equal to the exponent negative I, I hope you, you get that, the relationship between logarithms and indices. Now let's look at a situation where the logarithms is given to us. How can we write it in, in, in form of indices? Now if the log is given to us, how can we write it in an indices form? Look at it. This is log 81 base 3 and it's equal to 4. To write it in an indices form, it means 81 will be equal to this is the base, so 3 exponent 4. I hope you get that. So this one, how will you write it? You write 32, since this is the base, 2 exponent 5. And it's true, 2 exponent 5 is 32. 81 is the same as 3 exponent 4. Now if I have log b base a, and it is equal to, let's say, p, or log x base a is equal to p x will be equal to using this idea x will be equal to a exponent p i hope you get that the same way if i have log y base b okay base a and it is equal to q then we can say our y will be equal to a exponent q I hope you get you get a connection between indices and and logarithms. So before we start proving the laws of indices, there is something I want to introduce you to. That if we have log four exponent two base three, we can rewrite this as two log four base three. That's we drop the exponent here, then log 4 base 3. We'll prove this very soon. We'll be proving it. It's the third law of indices that we'll be proving. But I want you to get this concept. That if we have log 3 exponent negative 2 base 5, we can write it as negative 2 log 3 base 5. So therefore, if I have log s exponent n base e, how will it be written? It will be written as n log s Base e. Please, we'll be proving this law pretty soon. So take notice of it. However, I just want you to get a concept that anytime we have an exponential logarithm base, drop the exponent, then you rewrite the rest. So like this, we'll drop the 2, then we'll have log 4 base 3. Then this one, will drop the exponent, negative 2. 
log three base five. We will find out the reason why it's like that pretty soon. Now, another property I want you to get is that a log to the same base is one. So log two base two is one. Log three base three is one. So if you have log a base a, it will be one. We'll be pro proving this property also very soon. Why we have log two base two and is one, log three base three and is one, and log a base a and is one. So people have been saying that you have done a log one work. Uh, a log one work. We know that log one will be zero. We'll be proving this this to very very soon. But one thing I want you to also know that. Anytime a log is written without a base, it's in base 10. So if I, if I write this log 2 without any base, the base is 10. Please take notice of it. It's very, very necessary. So if I have log 10 without writing a base, log 10 without writing a base, that means the base is 10. So log 10 base 10 is nothing but 1. Now, with this idea, with this law, which we'll be looking at, and with this property, which we will be looking at also, we'll be able to prove all the laws of indices. So come with me as we prove the laws one by one. So the first law of logarithm is telling us that if I have log x base a plus log y base a, it will be equal to, see, I'll multiply the logs, log x, y, since they have the same base, I'll just repeat one of the base. So please take notice of it. We'll be proving this. Now let's see why this is true. So now to prove this, we say we let log x base a to be equal to p. Then remember, when log x base a equal to p, remember we can rewrite this in an indices form if you remember very well. It will be x will be equal to a exponent p. Then we we'll let log y base a to be equal to q. Now, if log y base a is equal to q, then we can say y is equal to a exponent q. So this is our first equation, and this is our second equation. Now, how do we solve this? So we have x equal to a exponent p, then y equal to a exponent q. Equation 1, equation 2. What do I do? I will multiply the two equations. Since I have x, y here. Look at this. Since I have x, y. I will multiply the two equations. So I will say equation 1 times equation 2. So to multiply the two equations, x times y will be x, y. Then we will multiply this a exponent p times a exponent q so our x y will be equal to remember indices if two indices are multiplying with the same base what do we do we just repeat one of the base and add the exponent so this will be a exponent p plus q what next i will take log base a of both sides so taking log base a of both sides of the equation So this place will be log x, y, base a, and to be equal to log a exponent p plus q base a. What happen? I have log x, y, base a, it will be equal to, remember, we say that when we have an exponent, we can drop off the exponent and repeat the base. So we say, P plus the Q log A base A. So half log XY base A and to be equal to P plus Q. Now we say a log to the same base is nothing but one. So log A base A is one. So this place will be one. One times that will be this. So now what is our P? We say P should be equal to log x base a. Look at it, p is equal to log x base a. And our q is equal to log y base a. So we just substitute it. So our log 
x y base a will be equal to p is log s base a plus our q plus q q is log y base a then since this is equal to this then this can be called so we can say this will be log x a plus log y a log s base a plus log y base a it will be called to log x y base a as as required so we are able to prove that if two logarithms are adding with the same base you can just repeat the base and multiply the logs i hope you get that concept we'll prove the second the second law so we look at the second law of logarithm the second law is saying that if you have log s base a minus log y base a that means two logs are subtracting with the same base we just repeat the log the, the base with the log then we divide the number so log x base a minus log y base a will be equal to log x over y base a we'll prove that why it is so now the same approach like the first row we let we let p or we let log x base a to be equal to p what happen s will be equal to a exponent p then we let log y base a to be equal to q so from that property y will be equal to a exponent q so this is our first equation our second one so let's write them s is equal to a exponent p and y is equal to a exponent a exponent q equation one equation two look at it this is dividing x over y so to get that x over y you divide the equation one by equation two so you say equation one divided by equation two so on divide i will have here x over y and to be equal to a exponent p divided by a exponent q so we say that from indices if two indices are dividing with the same base we just repeat the base and subtract the exponent so this will be x over y it will be equal to a exponent p minus q i hope you get that what next we take log base a of both sides so taking log base a of both sides what happen we have log x over y base a and we call to log a exponent p minus q is a so remember that property we can drop the exponent so we have log x over y base a and to be equal to p minus q log a is a remember we say log to the same base is nothing but one so we can have log x over y base a it will be equal to p minus q since this is one what's our p our p is giving us log x base a and our q is giving us log y base a we substitute so we have log x over y base a it will be equal to this will be log x base a minus q which is log y base a so since this is equal to this this can be so we can write it as log x base a minus log y base a and to be equal to log log s base a minus log y base a to be equal to log x over y base a that's since this is this this can be equal to that so we are able to prove that when two logarithms are subtracting with the same base then we can divide them and repeat one of the base i hope you get that
Now we'll put the third one. So we look at the third law. So from the beginning or the introduction, we say that if you have log s exponent n base e, it will be called n log s base e. Let's see the reason why. Or let's see if that's that's very true. So we let that's a third law. So we let log x base e to be equal to p again. Then what happened? x will be equal to a exponent p. Now you see that we have x exponent n here. So why don't we find exponent n of both sides of this equation? So we take him exponent exponent of n of both sides of both sides. What happened? So we have s exponent n and to be equal to a exponent p n. So you must, if you do something to the right hand side and do the same thing to the left hand side, you have not evaluated any row. So now we have this. What do we do? We take a log of base a of both sides. So taking log base a of both sides. So I will take the log of base a of both sides. We have log s exponent n base a for this one. And we have log a exponent p n base a. So what happens? We have log s exponent n to be equal to. We can drop off that. p n log a base a. So we have log s exponent n will be equal to p n since log a base a a log the same base is one we'll be looking at that property very soon why it is one so now we can rewrite this as log s exponent n is equal to n p p times n is the same as n times p so we know p to be log x base a so we just substitute so our log s exponent n will be equal to n and the p is log s exponent n. Then it is very true that if we have log s exponent n base a, it will be equal to dropping off the exponent n and have log s base a. I hope, I hope you understand and you can prove this. Please play over the video and I know you can. You will understand the concept. We will prove the fourth law that logarithms that governs logarithm. So come with me. So let's look at the fourth law. The fourth law is also known as the change of base. So that if you have log b base a, it will be, it can be equal to introducing another log of a base, a different base, log base c, and uh, log b base c. It will be equal to log b base c all over log a base c. So the base here will be divided by that. Let's see if that is very true. So let's we we'll let log b base a to be equal to p again. So what happen? Our b plays this property. Our b will be equal to a exponent p. So we we'll take log of a different base. So base c of both sides. So we'll taking log base c. Of both sides. Now what happened? We have log b base c and to be equal to log a exponent p base c. So remember the third law we can drop off the p. So we have log b base c and to be equal to p log a b c now we can we want to make p the subject we can divide both sides by this by log a b c then this by log a b c so this will divide that what's left our p will be equal to this log b b c all over log a b c now what's our p we said P should be equal to 
log d base a. So we just have it. So our log d base a is equal to log d base c over log a base c. So it is very true that we can, if you have log d base c, you can introduce a, a, a different log of a different base and to be equal to the log, it will be equal to the number here over the base, the log over the base. So please take notice of it. We'll be using all the laws pretty soon. So please learn how to prove all the laws. The next thing we'll look at is some properties covering logarithms. So to be able to know the properties governing logs, we must learn how to simplify it first without using calculator. So if they ask you to evaluate log a base 2 without using calculator, how will you solve that? So when you are asked to solve that, log a base 2 will let log a base 2 to be equal to, let's say, x. What happen? Remember that property. a to be equal to 2 exponent x. So, in indices, we say when the bases are the same, we are free to equate the exponent. So we need to write this a in an index form. So 8 in an index form will be 2 exponent 3. It will be equal to 2 exponent x. So now the basis are the same. S is actually equal to 3. So we can say that log 8 base 2 is equal to 3. Please check it out. Point log 8 base 2 using calculator. You get the answer to be 3. Now so let's look at the second one. This log 1 over 36 b 6. How do we evaluate that? So we just let log 1 over 36 b 6 to be equal to x. What happened? When we do that, 1 over 36, remember in our intro, it will be equal to 6 exponent x. So we need to write 1 over 36 having a base of 6. So the 1 over 36, you know 36 is 6 exponent 2. So it will be equal to 6 exponent x. You can rewrite this if you check out my videos on indices. So this will be 6 exponent negative 2. And it will be equal to 6 exponent x. So you see that the basis are now the same. Then x is equal to negative 2. So we can conclude that log 1 over 36 basis is nothing but negative. I, I hope you understand. We'll solve some more so that we'll develop the properties governing logarithms. So let's look at the third one, all in leading to knowing the properties governing logarithms. Please, you can pause the video and try solving this. Now, after you solve, compare answers with mine. So you can rewrite this. You can find the true set of this equation. If log 8 a base root 2 is equal to x, we should find a true set. So if this is equal to s, you can say 8, remember, it will be equal to root 2 exponent x, if you remember very well. So we have to write the two sides of the equation to have the same base. So 8 is 2 exponent 3. Then the square root of every number is that number exponent half. So we can rewrite root 2 here to be 2 exponent half x, exponent s. We have 2 exponent 3 will be equal to, remember there is a property of indices. When we have this, we can multiply the two index. So we have 2 exponent half x. So now the basis are the same. We can equate the exponent. So 3 is equal to half x. How do we do? We multiply through the equation by 2. Or we can cross multiply. 2 multiply 3 6. One multiply this s. Then s. So s is equal to 6. So since they say we should find truth set, since they say we should find truth set, we can say that s is like that, s is equal to 6. I, I, I hope you get that. I hope you get that. Now let's look at this one. They say we should evaluate log 2 base 2. So what do we do? We let log 2 base 2. To be equal to a variable, let's see y. So what happened? The 2 here will be equal to 2 exponent y. So 2 in an index form will be 2 exponent 1. 
it will be equal to two exponent y. The basis are the same. We can equate the exponent. So our log two, our log two base two is equal to one. Now let's look at log five base five. So we let this to be equal to let's say a. Then five will be equal to a exponent five exponent a. 5 exponent 1 will be equal to 5 exponent a. a is equal to 1. So look at it. Log 5 base 5 is 1. So you check that log 5 base 5 is 1. Log 2 base 2 is also 1. This implies that a log, that buttress our point that a log to the same base is nothing but 1. So that's the first property we must pay attention to. The first property that log a base a is nothing but one so a log to the same base is one please take notice of it so the first property we look at is a log to the same base is one now we want to look at another property so we want to evaluate log one base two so remember we let log one base two to be equal to any variable let's say x then our one will be equal to two exponent x so we must write to one to have a base of two any number exponent zero remember is one so say two exponent zero here will be one and it's equal to two exponent x now the bases are the same we can equate the exponent then we can say that log one base two is equal to zero now let's see log one let's evaluate log one remember we said that anytime a logarithm is written without the base is in base 10 so we can say this is in base 10 we we'll let it be equal to y then we can say 1 is equal to 10 exponent y using a, that property then which number is a 10 exponent which number will give you one is just zero so 10 exponent zero is equal to 10 exponent y the basis are the same then we can equate the exponent then we can say log one actually is zero so people usually say you have done a log one work. Simply they are referring that the work you have done is zero. Please do end it here. Before you sign out, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So that if I post most of this, you'll be the first to receive it. Until we meet again, my name is Tete J. Kepsiwichi.